Chapter 20 M. Master, you are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. Chapter 20 M. Master Asuda received his reward in the guild for completing the quest. At the same time, he heard the system in his mind. Ding, congratulations on completing the herb gathering quest. You've received 100 EXP. Right now, 100 EXP was too little for him. Well, he couldn't do much as he only accepted a rank F quest. If he accepted a higher rank quest, then the reward would be higher. Thank you for your effort. The receptionist said with a smile to him. That's nothing, Suda replied as he turned around and went to the quest board. He looked at the requests there and pondered what he should do. In the end, he picked the monster subjugation quest before turning back to the receptionist. You want this quest, sir? The receptionist looked at him with doubtful eyes. Yeah, Suta nodded. He just placed the quest in hunting the slime in the outskirt of the city. You know sir, it's hard to kill a slime without magic. The receptionist said worriedly. It's her job to give advice to the adventurers that took a quest here. Yes, I know that. Suta nodded at her words. He knew that a slime was hard to kill without magic. But he. He could use three spells, the Fey Fireball, Ice Shot, and Light Heal. His spells were enough to kill a slime. Also, he doesn't need to use spells to slay a slime. He knew the weakness of the slimes. With his passive skill, Sword Mastery, he would be able to destroy the core of the slime. A slime would instantly die if its core was destroyed. It's not a secret as many people know this already. It's not his first time hunting a slime. Back in the undead sanctuary, he conquered a dungeon full of slime and even took down an evolved slime. Okay, sir, but be careful. The receptionist said before she recorded the quest that he took. I know that, Suda smiled wryly as this woman was too worried about him. Ding, quest triggered. Monster subjugation. Kill 10 slimes and retrieve its core. Rewards. 300 EXPO. The rewards were much higher than before. As expected of a monster subjugation quest. After that, he exited the Adventurer's Guild and patted Yuko. Let's go, we have another quest. Mew. <laughs> Suda laughed at her voice. It lacks enthusiasm. It was like she forcing herself. Well, you know that we will be able to rank up after we completed 9 rank F quests including this, Suda said while holding the monster subjugation quest paper. A rank F adventurer needed to complete 10 rank F quest before they rank up to rank E, then, the rank E needed to complete 15 rank E quest. Above that, the rank D was much different than lower ranks. A rank D adventurers were already called veteran adventurers. To increase their rank, people needed strength and merits. Completing various quests wasn't enough to rise up in rank. Mew. Yuko tilted her head at his words. Well, I'll tell you more while we walk, Suda said as he began to walk. He noticed that the people around were looking at him with a weird gaze. It's strange that he was talking to a monster that couldn't understand him. How can they understand the connection between Yuko and me, Suda thought. Suddenly, an idea came into his mind. What if he let Yuko wear a communicator? Wouldn't she able to talk that way? Yuko, let's go. Suda laughed before he quickened his pace. Yuko dragged her huge body as she followed him behind. Suda removed the communicator on his neck. Come here. He said to Yuko as he lifted up his hand and made a gesture to come. Yuko looked at him with confusion before she stretched her neck to him. Damn, your neck is too thick. I couldn't even put the communicator. Suda cursed as he sighed. It seems that he needed to add some wire to that it could fit her size. Mew. Yuko looked at him sadly. She thought that Suda was angry at her. Suda ignored her and rubbed his chin. He muttered, anything is good as long as it could fit her neck. He looked around him and do something that Yuko couldn't understand. She just watched him pick up as different kinds of grass. Suda looked at her and said, why don't you hunt some slime while I'm finding a strong enough grass so we could complete the quest faster. 
Yuko just looked back at him. Seeing this, Suda sighed and took out the quest paper. He pointed at the picture of a slime on the paper. Here, defeat this and take out the core. Yuko nodded her head. It seemed that she understood what he meant but Suda was really doubtful about that. Finally. I've finished modifying it. Suda exclaimed in a loud voice as he raised the communicator above his head. He looked around and saw Yuko running towards him. What? He was surprised when he saw her. After all, she was holding a slime in both of her hands. One on the left and one on the right. She stopped in front of him and opened her arms showing the two slimes. She then lowered her head as if waiting to be praised. This. Suta was speechless. He brandished his sword and stabbed the slime in the core. The slime disintegrated, leaving only the core. Mew. Yuko was shocked when she saw him kill the slime. She thought that he wanted to play with slime so she brought them here. She never thought that he would kill them. I order you to hunt them. Well, it doesn't matter. Suda sheathed his sword and picked up the core. Well, let's think about that later. Let's see this first. Suta said and he showed the communicator to Yuko. Yuko looked at it before she sniffed it. Come let me put it on you, Suta said and he carefully put the communicator on her neck. He picked a tough grass before so that it could support the communicator on her neck. It will not snap easily. Here, and it's done. Suda looked at the communicator on her neck with a satisfied expression. His effort wasn't in vain. It fitted her right. Come on, try saying something. He spoke eagerly. Mew. Yuko was confused. What? What's wrong with this communicator? Ah, uh. I forgot this is a magical one. I need mana to activate. Suda put his hand on the communicator and controlled his mana. He poured a little amount in the communicator. Yuko couldn't control her mana. She couldn't even manipulate it. In the battle, she always used brute force to dominate her enemies. The communicator lit up as it started functioning. Come. Say something. Suda said with a smile. He waited for a while before he heard a small little voice coming out of her. M. Master. Oh. It works. It works. Suda laughed loudly. Although he couldn't understand it, it seemed that she pronounced some word. From now on, he would be able to communicate with her. It's just that this communicator needs mana to work. If it didn't receive mana, it will stop functioning. It seems that he needs to buy a non-magical one. But it needs a battery. It would drain his wallet. Well, if he could communicate with her then it's worth all the money. Okay, let's finish the quest and buy communicator as soon as possible, Suda said before he turned around leaving Yuko with a dumbfounded expression. After a few minutes of walking, Suda found a slime. Let's finish it quickly. He brandished his sword and rushed towards the slime. Swoosh. He didn't even let the slime react as he pierced its jelly body directly to its core. With the level of his a sword mastery, he could accurately pinpoint the core of the slime. Suda didn't stop and continued to hunt more slime. He only stopped when he collected 10 slime cores. With this, the quest was complete. He just needed to report it to the guild. Suda went back to the guild to report. You've finished it. The receptionist asked him. Well, the slime was not that powerful. As long as you've found its core, you can kill it. Suta said as he placed the ten slime cores on the table. The receptionist counted the cores before she gave him the reward. She also recorded the quest that he did to his ID, ding, congratulations on completing a monster subjugation quest. You've received 300 EXP. Suda ignored the system prompts and picked up his adventurer's ID. He then exited the adventurer's guild. Suda went to the shop and bought a communicator for Yuko. He spent his money on this as it was important to him. He also bought a lot of meat for her as he knew that she was hungry right now. Another day had passed and nothing big happens. 
The city was still lively and there were new people that's coming in and out of the city every day. Chapter 21 Registration in Lodro Institute You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 21 Registration in Lodro Institute Suda, don't forget what I taught you. This is what you will need in the near future. A faint image with a male voice spoke. I understand, Grandpa, Suda answered. Then, he noticed a large machine-shaped circle. It's white and has a transparent glass surface. What is this? Suda asked. It's called Virtual Capsule, you play and be number one in this game. All right. You will understand everything someday. Suda woke up just before sunrise. He looked around and saw that he was in his rented room. He stood up and did some warm-up exercise before going to the bathroom to wash his face. After he washed his face he went down for breakfast. Good morning. Suda greeted the owner when he saw her. He first orders food before sitting in the vacant chair. A few minutes later, the meal was served by the waitress at the top of his table. Thanks for the food. He didn't even have a second thought before he ate it. The cooked food was very different from what he ate when he was in the undead sanctuary. What he ate there were kobolds and goblins' flesh. When he thought about it, he did cannibalism. He was a goblin and he ate goblin flesh. He had nothing to say about it as he had to eat anything to survive. He had finished his breakfast a few minutes later. He drank water and thanked the food. Then, he got up and paid for the food before he came out. He went to Yuko and fed her. Just be here Yuko. I'll be back later, too. Suta said before leaving. Yuko just stared at her back. Today is the day Suda will register with the Ladro Institute. He must register before getting the entrance examination. It's better than what it is in the game. Suta said as he gazed in front of a large building. This building was the Ladro Institute. The best and most popular school in the city of Ladros. Many have completed their studies here which have become popular throughout the country. Some of them became the city lord and the leader of the royal guard. Suda is in front of a large gate with the inscription, Welcome to the Ladro Institute. He no longer hesitated and he quickly entered the Ladro Institute. There were many students inside the school. Different breeds of creatures can be found here. The beast, the human, and even the elves were here. He went around the place before finding the place where he would register. Suda walked over and stopped in front of a man. The man was wearing a dark blue colored coat and it has a white pattern on its end. He had blue hair at shoulder's length. Suda approached the man before he said, Sir, I will register here to get the entrance exam. Just ask the lady over there at the counter, said the man. Suta nodded and said, Thanks, before looking at the counter. He saw a beautiful woman with brown hair and brown eyes. He approached the woman and repeated what he had said to the man earlier. The woman understood what he was saying so she took a piece of paper and placed it in front of him. Please, fill this up first, said the woman to Suta. Suta nodded before taking the pen and writing his information on the paper that the woman had given him. After he wrote his info he handed over the paper to the woman. The woman glanced at the paper before looking at Suta. She opened her mouth and spoke. Sir, you have to pay 100 gold coins for the entrance examination. Suda put his hand inside his pocket and took out his purse. He counted the coins before he placed the coins on the desk. Thank you for registration sir, you can come back in a week for the entrance examination. The woman smiled after giving her the money. He gave Suda a roll. That's the stab, don't lose it because you need it in the examination. Thank you. Suda first toured the institute before leaving. He had one week to do what he needs. The test will cover the history of the city and the country. He wasn't worried about it cause he knew the history of this country. For other people, a week was a time given to them to prepare for the exam but for Suda, it's his chance to raise his rank as an adventurer. Suda went to the store first and bought the meat and fruit that Yuko likes. Yuko didn't really eat the fruit. She just kept it like a treasure. Even he doesn't know why she likes keeping fruits. 
I'm back. Yuko yanked Suda and the two of them fell to the floor. He patted Yuko's head so she stopped. Sniff. Sniff. Yuko turned her attention to the bag that Suda was carrying. She quickly opened it and picked up the fruit inside the bag. She picked up the fruits and hid them before returning to Suda. <laughs> Do you like it? Suda laughed at what Yuko had done. He even thought that Yuko wouldn't hesitate to exchange for some fruits. M. Master. Suda heard Yuko's gentle voice. It was a little girl's voice. Is a master the only word that you know? Suda said as he patted Yuko's head. Master. Yuko stuck out her tongue and licked his cheek. He had already given the food he had bought to Yuko. He sat down to the side and watched Yuko eat. He confirmed something since the first time he meets a person in this world. The people here in this world were not bound by any computers. They were not artificial intelligence that has limited actions. The talks and laughs between Jimmy and the Gale group were the proof of it. An artificial intelligence wouldn't be able to do that. Their conversation. It's not scripted like in the game. They have their own thoughts and intentions that do not belong to artificial intelligence. If so, then this world will run into a future he does not know. Being a game, all moves of the NPC were limited. They just do what they were programmed to. It looks like he needs to be careful about his next step. He will understand and observe what will happen before he made a move. Well, it's not that those powerful people will notice him as he was too weak right now. First, he will enter the Ladro Institute to become a mage. His ability will be greatly enhanced when he became a mage. It's not just the increase in stats. He will also have a specialty and the mage's skill tree will open up for him. That's why it's important to have a class. Also, now was the right time for the second evolution. He contemplated the next evolution of the high-end goblin. His first evolution was focused on strength attribute. After a few minutes, he thought of the path that he will take. This will be good for my next evolution. Suda couldn't help but smile. Level 20 was the level where the difficulty in leveling up was starting to increase. The EXP required to level up were more than 50,000. There's also a change after a player reached level 20. The next evolution wasn't level 30 but level 40. 20 levels are needed before he can evolve again. Level 40 was the level cap of version 2 in Battle Worlds Online. This was also the beginning of the player's ability to change the game's story started to appear. This level already has the potential to become a top rank adventurer. It was especially to the monster type player. The change in level 40 was no small feat for the monster type player. This level was the start and they will slowly catch up with the other players. The increase in abilities was incredibly huge to those monster type players. Before all those things, Suta needed to raise his adventurer rank first. To make that happen, he needed to complete 10 rank F quest. Have you finished your meal? Let's go out now, we will do some quest. Suta said to Yuko who was cleaning her red fur. Yuko stopped what she was doing and looked at Suta. Even though she has a communicator, Suda was still having difficulty communicating with Yuko. After all, the only word that she knew was master. Suda stood up and patted his clothes before he approached Yuko. He grabbed Yuko's soft fur and repeated his words. Let's go now, Yuko. I know you want to get out of this place, right? Yuko stared at Suda's face. After a few seconds, she stuck out her tongue and licked Suda's face. Stop. Stop doing that. I will always tell you that I don't like it. Both of them went to the Adventurer's Guild and took a quest. Chapter 22 Examination You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 22 Examination of Suda, don't put your real name on it use your name if something real happens. A man with a faint image said. Why? The boy asked. You will know when the time is right. Just remember that our family was one of the strongest in ancient times. The man calmly told the boy. Yeshi. But I have never read Yeshi in Japanese history. 
The boy looked at the man in doubt. I'm not from this country. I'm from a far distant place. Go ahead and play. The man looked at the cloud before he said. All right, Grandpa. Blood. Is this your chosen name here in this game? Yes. Next time when something similar happens then use your real name, Suta Yeshi. There will be people who will help you because you are in Yeshi. I understand. No matter what happens don't forget what I had said today. Suda woke up early in the morning. He quickly got up and took a shower. Afterward, he came down and ordered breakfast. The same as always. He said loudly for the waitress to hear. The waitress understood what he was saying so the waitress went inside the kitchen. After a few minutes, the waitress came out with Suda's order. She put the food on the table. Thanks for the food. He quickly eats his breakfast. He's in a hurry because today was the exam day at the Ladro Institute. Right, today the test will be held. He cannot be late on this test because it depends on whether he enters or not. Since it's the examination day, this only means one week had passed. A lot of things happened this week. One of these was Suda becoming a rank E adventurer. During this time he completed 10 quests that needed to rise in rank. He has an outstanding record. The completion rate and completion speed were high. He quickly finishes the quests he had taken. Within a week, he already became a rank E adventurer. He completed the quests he had taken with Yuko. The rank F quests are easy to complete so it's not surprising that he completes it within a week. After he finished his meal and paid the bill, Suda went to Yuko and he fed her the delicious food that she likes. Just stay here, for now, I will quickly finish the test. Suda said to Yuko while patting her head. Mew. Yuko stopped eating and she looked at Suda. Okay, I will bring you back the fruits that you like so much. Suda smiled wryly at her. He changed his clothes and went to the institute to take the exam. He arrived in the place 20 minutes before the exam. He opened the door and stepped inside. There, he saw a lot of people were already in their seats. The other examinees looked at him and he just ignored those gaze. He took out his stab and looked at his seat number. Seat 52, huh? He looked around and found his seat in the back. He sat there and observed his surroundings. The people here were too tense as he could see sweat forming in the forehead, even though the weather was quite cold today. The whole room was devoid of any sound as nobody dared to make a noise here. Turning his head to the left side, he saw a beautiful girl seating beside him. She has beautiful silver hair that dr.pes down to her shoulders onto her back. Her golden pupils that have a hint of red were like a piece of expensive gem. She was wearing a simple white blouse and a black mini skirt with red linings. Suda could feel some sort of strange aura coming out of her. Yeah, it was really weird. It feels that was not her true appearance and she's concealing her real identity. The girl noticed his gaze so she turned her head and looked at him in the eyes. What is it? She asked with a cold tone. And dot nothing. Suda gulped and turned his head. He was captivated by those beautiful eyes of her. He took a deep breath to calm his nerves. After 30 minutes, a man with short orange hair wearing a black coat entered the room. He walked straight to the table in front, which was reserved for the examiner. He placed down the bunch of paper he was carrying on the table before looking around. Cough. I'm John Meyer your examiner in written exam. The man cleared his throat and introduced himself. There are 70 examinees in this room so don't cause any noise as you all could overwhelm me. Some of the examinees sighed in relief when they heard his words and tone. They were glad that he's not a strict person like the other examiner. It feels like a huge burden has been lifted off their shoulders. As you have known, the entrance exam has two types. The written and practical exam. You need to pass these two for you to enter the institute. John, the examiner, said while looking at every people's face inside the room. All right, we will start the written exam now. John placed a stack of papers on the desk of the people in the front row. Take one and pass the rest to your back. 
the examinees started to pass the test paper around. In just a minute, all the people here were holding a test paper. The passing score is 70 and below that is fail, so answer it carefully. You all have two hours to answer the test, that's it and good luck. John said before sitting down in the front. He was observing every examinee looking out for cheaters. Suda turned his attention to his test paper. He read it silently. I don't know some of the questions, but it will not hinder me, he thought when he finished reading all the questions. He will still pass the test even though there's a question that he doesn't know the answer. After all, the passing score was 70. Time passed by quickly and one by one the examinees finished answering their test papers. And he, Suda, was the first one who finished answering the test. Everyone looked at him but he knew that he had only answered all the questions that he knows. Why would he answer a question he doesn't know the answer? So some of the questions in his test were blank. Since you've all finished before the time, you can go now to take the practical exam, Han said as he arranged all the test papers. The girl beside Suda stood up as soon as the examiner said those words. Suda looked at her as she leaves the room. He then also stood up and leave the room. The others followed them and went to the place where the practical exam will be held. The practical exam where the place where examinees going to showcase their skills and abilities. They were in a very wide place. Dummies for practicing close combat were neatly arranged at the corner. There were also weights and shooting targets here. This place was one of the training grounds of the Ladro Institute. Those things that needed in training were all made from tough materials. It couldn't easily break or shatter. Even using a yellow equipment wasn't enough to break those things here in the training ground. The examinees were gathered in the center of the training ground. In front of them was a man wearing a black tank top. His muscles were bulging out of his clothes. Yo. I'm the one that's going to test you. The examiner said with a smile on his face. I'm going to record your abilities here and check if you're really eligible for the institute. Suta knew that as long as a person knew some skills or have enough firepower that person will pass the exam. It's a simple test to check the potential of a person. Right now, he has three spells in his arsenal. Ice shot and eye fireball were enough for this kind of test. Who wants to go first? The examiner asked while looking at the examinees. Me? Suda raised his hand while walking to the front. Okay, as long as you've hit me that's enough. I will give you one minute. The examiner said with a smirk. He then placed an alarm. Suta nodded and the other examinees took a distance away from the two. I'm going, Suta smirked and he dashed towards the examiner. He doesn't need to defeat the examiner, he just needs to showcase his abilities. He knew that even if he used his full power he wouldn't be able to defeat the examiner. Suda opened both of his palms and casted two spells simultaneously. Fireball, ice shot, the two spells went straight towards the examiner. He was surprised for a second but he quickly regained his composure. He lifted up his thick arm and waved it towards the two spells. Bang. Bang. The fireball and ice exploded in his arm. But it didn't leave any scratches at all. Suda expected so he once again dashed towards the examiner using the skill, dash. You are going for close combat. The examiner looked at Suda who arrived in front of him. Of course, after all this is my specialty, Suda said and he threw a powerful punch containing his mana. Swoosh. The examiner tilted his head and avoided the punch. Then he noticed a light above him. He looked up and saw two fireballs going straight at him. Good. The examiner smiled and took a deep breath. Powerful mana burst out of him. Pouring his mana, he blew the two fireballs away. He then quickly waved his arm towards Suda. Suda bent his body barely avoiding the arm of the examiner. He kicked the ground and using his feet as a medium, he casted, ice shot, twice. He then opened his mouth and, the fireball, came out. This level of control. The examiner crossed his arm before him to block the spells. Bang. 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 Suda was about to attack again when a powerful aura swept out. 
He then saw a fist appeared in front of him. You're still smiling, huh? The examiner said as his fist was going straight to Suda's face. The shadow of his fist slowly covered Suda's smirk. Suddenly. Ring. A sound of alarm echoed in the whole training ground. Chapter 23 Three Spells You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 23 Three Spells Ring The sound of alarm echoed in the whole area. The fist of the examiner stopped an inch away from Suda's face. That was close. Suda whispered before he moved away from the examiner. He patted his clothes before looking back at the examiner. He asked, did I pass the exam? He knew that he doesn't necessarily need to defeat the examiner. He just needed to showcase his skills and if his performance was good he would automatically pass the exam. You're good but whether you pass or not you will know it later. The examiner said with a smile. He was impressed by Suda's ability and he wouldn't deny it. He then turned around and looked at the rest of the examinees. He opened his mouth and said, All right, who wants to go next? I'll go. A cold voice sounded. Suda turned his head to look. He saw the girl with long silver hair. She's the one seating beside him in the written exam before. Be prepared as I will give you one minute. The examiner said as he walked towards the center of the room. The girl distanced herself from the examiner. She just stood straight at her place while waiting for the signal of the examiner to start the examination. The examiner set the alarm before giving her a go. Go. The girl lifted up her right hand and her magic power flared up. Freeze, the floor beneath the girl's feet quickly turned into ice. It spread out and the examiner observed the spell before he jumped backward. Ice spike, sharp spike that was made of ice burst out of the ground. The examiner looked at the spike coming at him. He imbued his mana in his hand before waving it. Bang. His force shattered the spike and he looked at the girl that was continuously casting magic spells. The quality of this spell is much better than the boy before. He thought as he landed on the ground causing the ice to break into countless tiny particles. The boy before was a fighter that was an expert in managing his spell. He knew how to utilize it perfectly. And this girl was a textbook example of a magician. Cold wind, cold and powerful wind swept out in the area. The examiner raised his mana to protect himself from the cold wind. It's time for me to attack. He took a deep breath and roared loudly that shook the entire ground. Tiger's roar, boom. The examinees who were watching the fight covered their ears. They felt their strength leaving their body. Ice wall, a wall of ice appeared in front of the girl but it was shattered immediately when it made contact with the sound wave. Boom. The examiner burst forth towards the girl leaving a trail of smoke behind him. Ice blade, a blade made of ice formed in the midair and the girl grabbed it before launching towards the examiner. Bang. The blade and the fist collided, creating a loud sound. Oh. So you know close combat. The examiner was slightly surprised at this development. He didn't expect the girl to know close combat. Ring. The alarm sounded. It means that one minute had passed since the battle started. The ice blade disappeared in the hand of the girl and she turned around and left like nothing happened. The examiner looked at the girl's retreating figure and shook his head. He then turned to the rest of the examinees and said, Okay, next. Suda appeared at the girl. He didn't expect that she was that strong. The magic spells that she cast were much more powerful than his magic spell, and it seemed that she was still hiding her real strength. He tried to recall if there's someone that's proficient in ice magic in the powerful influential figure in the game. He recalled a lot of people that were proficient in ice magic, but nothing looks similar to her. It took one hour to finish the examination. Not all the examinees demonstrated skills like Suda and the silver dot haired girl. But there were also others that show skills not losing to Suda. Some of the beast folk demonstrated strength surpassing Suda. John came inside the training ground. He went straight to the examiner and whispered something in his ears. Sir John, the one in the written exam, have finished checking your papers. 
Now, with me here, we will show you who passed the entrance examination. The examiner said in a loud voice. John stepped forward and opened his arm, and a semi-transparent screen appeared in the midair. It was made of magic. Names of examinees were written on the screen. Suda and the other examinees checked the words that were written on the screen. In just a few moments, Suda found his name. As expected, he passed the entrance examination. The other examinees looked dejected. They were the ones who didn't pass the exam. For those who pass the exam, come with me. John said before he turned around and left. Suda and the other examinees who passed the exam followed John. Suda looked around and just as he expected the silver-haired girl also passed the exam. 30 out of 70 examinees passed the exam. They were cut above the other and all have superb skills. The group entered a door and inside there was another wide area. It was as wide as the training ground. This was the stadium of the Ladro Institute. This place could host more than 20,000 people at the same time. At the front, on the stage, there was a group of people who were standing on the stage. They were all wearing a black coat with black pants. You can pick your major course, John said to the examinees. The people on the stage said their class. Swordsman. Brawler. Healer. Mage. It was until that Suda heard his main class that he started to move. He looked up and saw a middle-aged man with short blonde hair. He was a professor of mage students at Ladro Institute. Suda was major in magic spells so it's only natural that he's taking the mage course. The silver-haired girl also took the mage course. He looked around and saw that the other people were already forming their own group. He then looked at his own group and found five people, including him and the silver-haired girl, took the mage course out of 30 examinees who passed the exam. I'm Bargain, one of the professors in mage course. The middle-aged man introduced himself first. He added, follow me, before he started walking. Bargain toured them around the institute before they went to the mage building. He explained a lot of things about the institute and history about how it was built. The group went inside a room. The room was huge and at the corner were spell books piled neatly. This is the gifts of the institute to all of you so pick three spell books there and learn it, Bagan said to them with a smile on his face. The institute is generous to its students so don't worry about it. As long as you study earnestly it's okay. And the institute will not hesitate to provide you more resources. This was what Suda was waiting for. The free gifts of the institute. This was what he wanted. The spell books to complete the requirements in getting a class. Thanking Bargain for the gifts, the other three went to check the spell books. Suta noticed that the silver-haired girl wasn't checking the spell books. She was just standing there on her position looking at the spell books. He opened his mouth and asked, Do you also want to check the books? The silver-haired girl turned her head and looked at him. She slowly opened her mouth and replied, No, I'm okay, with leftover. I see. Suta nodded and turned his attention to the spell books. He didn't hesitate anymore as he went there and checked the spell books one by one. Most of the spells were basic spell just like his, fireball, ice shot, and, light heal. There were a few high dot level spells. But, all of these were in the range of tier 1 spell. Well, even if there's a tier 2 spell here, he wouldn't be able to learn it. It was because only those that promoted their class to level 2 class would be able to learn it. Mage was just a level 1 class. There were a lot of paths after the mage, but he would choose the path he chose in the game. Mage becoming a battle mage, then a great battle mage. In the end, he picked the Agility Boost, Strength Boost, and Mud Slide spells. The two spells that he picked were buff spells that he needed. Back in the game, he was proficient in buffing himself while adding debuffs to his opponent. He got stronger while his opponents got weaker. Even those abnormal status wouldn't affect because of his different kinds of buffs he cast it on himself. Well, he was experts in different styles as a great battle mage. These three are the ones I choose, Suda said while looking at Bargain. Bargain looked at Suda and then at the spellbooks that he chose. 
He was wondering if Suda was planning on taking a support type mage. He was wrong at that Suda was planning on supporting himself. Chapter 24 Rank 1 Mage You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 24 Rank 1 Mage Suda finished choosing the spell books. He picked the spell that's suitable for the current hymn. The silver dot haired girl picked random spell books after they finished picking their own spell books. She wasn't that excited like the other people. More like, she doesn't show her emotion. Okay, now that you've chosen your own spell books, it's time to measure your body for the uniform, Bargain said. He turned his head and added, Don't worry, you don't have to pay anything. The group walked out of the room as they followed Bargain. Hello, since we're all in the mage course, I hope I got along with everyone. A boy wearing a simple white shirt and black pants said. He has short spiky black hair and some strands of his hair fell on his forehead. He has pitched up black eyes and his build was average, not too thin and also not too bulky. I will start with myself. I'm Brian de Gruel, I hope we got along. The boy introduced himself as Brian de Gruel. I'm Joshua, I've been living here in Lodro City ever since I was born. I'm George, it's really my dream to enter the institute. The other two introduced themselves. George was a beast folk specifically, a rabbit people. Joshua has dark brown skin and he was also not a human. He was a wood elf. There were many types of elves in the whole continent. The high elf, wood elf, sea elf, mountain elf, dark elf, etc. They were very proficient in controlling their mana and have a high mana pool. Suta then turned his head to the silver dot haired girl. He saw that she was staying silent. He sighed and opened his mouth, I'm Suda, I just arrived here in the city last week. Then, the silver dot haired girl opened her mouth and said, I'm Alice. That's good, I hope we all get along, Brian said with a smile. We're here. Bargain's voice sounded. The group arrived in front of the two rooms. One for the girls and one for the boys. You can go inside the room and someone will assist you there. You will get your uniform next week and you will start attending in class. Bargain said to them. Suda, Brian, and the rest nodded and went inside the room designated for boys. While Alice went to the room beside it. It was the room for the girls. In the room, they could choose whether the uniform could enhance their mana or a defensive uniform. Suda has chosen the one that could enhance his mana. After half an hour, all of them finished measuring their size. They come back in a week to get their uniform and start their class. Okay, you can go now don't forget to come back next week, Bargain said to them. Yes, Sir Bargain, Brian said enthusiastically. Suda, Alice, and the other just nodded their head. Good. Bargain nodded and left. Brian looked at them and asked, do you want to eat something? We can use this chance for us to know each other. I have another plan for today, Alice said before she turned around and left. Sorry, I also have something to do. Suda smiled wryly at Brian. I understand. Brian nodded and looked at the other two. How about the two of you? George and Joshua looked at each other before they nodded at Brian. That's good. Brian smiled widely. Before coming back to the inn, Suda didn't forget to buy Yuko the food and fruits that she likes so much. He gave the fruit and meat to Yuko before he went to his room. He closed the door and took out the three spell books he got from the institute. Okay, I will start. Saying this, he opened the spell books and he heard system prompts inside his head. Ding, do you want to learn agility boost spell for two skill points? Yes, slash no. Do you want to learn strength boost spell for two skill points? Yes, slash no. Do you want to learn mud slide spell for two skill points? Yes, slash no. Yes. He said mentally and used six skill points for learning the three spells. Ding, you've learned agility boost. You've learned strength boost. You've learned mud slide. The knowledge about the three spells was poured in his head about the structure and composition of each spell. Other people would need to read and studies the content of the book before they could understand its spell structure. 
Understanding the spell structure didn't mean that they could cast the spell. They still need to build it in their mind for them to cast it. But Suda was different. Just using skill points he would understand all the content of the book and even cast it without a problem. But getting skill points was hard. Apart from leveling up, he could only get it from the quest he received. In the latest version of the game, the level cap there was level 80, and it means that a player only gets 80 skill points from leveling up. Soon, another system prompt pop in his head. You've reached the requirements for mage class. Do you want to become a mage? Yes, slash no. Yes. Suta said without hesitation. Ding, processing information. Getting the class mage. Ding, you've successfully become a mage. Strength, agility, dexterity, and vitality attributes have increased by 10 points. Intelligence attributes have increased by 20 points. Mana pool increased by 50. Magical damage increased by 100%, magical resistance increased by 100%, mana recovery increased by 10. Suda sighed when he read all the system prompts. His magical damage was much more stronger now. Before his spells couldn't damage the examiner, but now he was sure that he could damage him. But this wasn't all the benefits he received in getting a class. There's also the skill tree of mage class. With him becoming a mage, he would be able to unlock its skill tree. Ding, please choose your attribute. Darkness, light, uh, fire, water, earth, wind, uh, choose one of the elements and you would be able to use its skill tree. Suda didn't hesitate and select the G darkness. You've unlocked darkness element skill tree. A skill tree appeared in front of his vision. Various spells were still locked, but he would be able to unlock it with enough skill points. Looking at this familiar skill tree, a smile appeared on his face. He could see a single spell from the lowest part of the screen. It was the A shadow bind of spell. Above it were three more spells that were still dark. The requirements to unlock it was leveling the A shadow bind to level 5 spell. Shadow bind was a spell that could restraint and slow down his target. It uses the target's shadow to bind them. He tapped the A shadow bind spell and a prompt appeared. Ding, do you want to learn shadow bind spell for two skill points? Yes, slash no. Yes. Ding, you've learned shadow bind spell. He once again tapped the A shadow bind spell. Do you want to level up shadow bind spell for two skill points? Yes, slash no. Leveling up a skill to level 2 needs 2 skill points, and leveling it up to 3 needs 3 skill points. That was the pattern of leveling up a tier 1 spell. He used all of his skill points to level up the Shadow Bind spell to level 5 and unlocked the 3 spells above it. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any skill points to learn it. Ever since he came here in this world, he earned a total of 31 skill points. He used 8 for his first 3 spells and 1 skill. Last week he used one skill point for learning Nerman language. Lastly, today he used the remaining skill points to learn four spells and leveling one spell to five. He earned most of his skill points in leveling up and the quest to conquer the dungeon. Rank F and E quest in the Adventurer's Guild could give him more EXP than the quest in conquering the dungeon, but it doesn't give him skill points. Although the EXP rewards in conquering a dungeon were 100, it still has a skill point as a reward so it's better. It only if he was conquering low.level dungeon. If it's about conquering a mid-level dungeon then the reward he would get was higher. 5000 EXP was the minimum reward plus the skill points and free attribute points. After all, the bosses in low.level dungeons were just ordinary monsters in mid-level dungeons. Suda shook his head once he became a rank D adventure, this thing will not be a problem for him. The reward has at least one skill point. It's better than nothing. He checked his stats. Name. Suda Yeshi Race. High-end goblin level. 17 class. Rank 1 mage. Darkness health. 246 of 246 stamina. 148 slash 148 mana 260 slash 260 strength 138 128 plus 10 plus agility 
104, 99 plus 5, plus dexterity. 91, 86 plus 5, plus intelligence. 105, 95 plus 10, plus vitality. 103, 88 plus 15, plus free attribute points. 13 skills. Dash, stab, sword mastery, mana manipulation, blessing of the great, spells. Fireball, ice shot, light heal, agility boost, strength boost, mud slide, shadow bind, traits. Extraordinary body, equipment skills. Harvester of the soul. Soul collected. 162 slash 600, skill points. Zero he was satisfied in the improvement of his status. He was a rank 1 mage. He would be able to rank up by learning 3 spells of his specialty and upgrading 1 spell to level 10. Once he rank up, his stats would increase once again. Every class has 3 ranks and promoting to rank 3 was a requirement to upgrade a class to a higher class. Well, he doesn't need to worry about this for now. The institute gave him another 1 week so he would use this time to complete some quest. Chapter 25 Escort Quest. You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. Chapter 25. Escort Quest Suda stretched his body as he finished getting a class. He checked his equipments and nodded. He then went downstairs to Yuko. Yuko was in her room taking a good rest. Come let's go. Suda shook Yuko's body. Dot Mew. Yuko slowly opened her eye and looked at Suda. Yuko, we'll leave this city and do some quest, Suda said to her. Yuko stood up and licked his face. Suda planned to get some of his equipments this week. Getting a piece of dark grade equipment was enough. Dark grade equipment was just lower than universal grade equipment. The Avidra Sword Saya. He had a lot of equipments back in the game and Avidra Sword Saya was one of his weapons. Aside from a flesh-eating scythe and Helfiend spear, the Avidra sword Saya was his favorite to use. It was also the easiest to get among his other powerful weapons. It was within the vicinity of the Hebrai kingdom, so a week of time was enough for him to get it. For his current style, Vidra sword Saya was suitable for him. Come let's go. Suda patted Yuko and opened the gate. Yuko kept licking his cheek. She showed no sign of moving away from him. <laughs> I've gotten stronger once again. I could easily defeat you now. Suda said as he laughed. Since she was his pet, he would train her to become powerful. He doesn't want her to stay at her level forever. Both of them left the inn. They went to some shops and bought the food they need. Then, they went straight to the Adventurer's Guild. Like always, a lot of people gathered inside the guild. Some of them were drinking and some were laughing. Suta went straight to the quest board. He looked at the quest board looking for a suitable quest. This is good. He lifted his hand and picked up an escort quest. He then went straight to the receptionist. I want this quest. The receptionist nodded and she recorded the quest that he picked. She recorded it in a machine that looks like a computer. Ding, quest triggered. Escort. Escort a merchant to Bulmar village. You will fail if the merchant died. Rewards. 500 EXP The reward was only EXP for a rank E quest. Skill points would only appear in rank D quest or above rank D. Suda was going to the Bulmar village that's why he picked an escort quest. He just needs to protect the merchant and he wasn't the only one who accepted this quest. There were also other adventurers going to the Bulmar village. Suta picked up his luggage. Sadly, I don't have inventory. He then turned toward Yuko and said, let's go. Both of them went to the gate of the city. It took them a few dozen minutes before they arrived near the gate. Is that it? Suta saw carriages lining up near the gate. He walked towards the carriage with a red falcon symbol. It was the symbol of the merchant that he was going to escort. A huge man wearing a leather armor saw him walking. Oh. So I'm going to work beside the tamer of red fur bear. Suda smiled wryly at the man and asked, where is the owner? He's inside. 
The man replied while pointing at the carriage behind him. Thanks. Suda thanked the man and knocked on the door of the carriage. Knock. Knock. After a few knocks, the door opened and a short man came out. He has curly hair, a long beard, and a thick mustache. He was a dwarf. The dwarf looked at Suda for a while before he nodded. He then looked at the adventurers gathering near the carriage and said, Since all of you are here, we will leave now. The adventurers nodded at the dwarf before they packed their belongings. The man before walked towards Suda and extended his hand. I'm Jack, a rank D adventurer, I hope we get along during our quest. Me too, Suda shook hands with Jack. He added, I'm Suda, a ranky adventurer. Jack laughed and looked back at the other adventurers before shouting, Guys, we're doing a quest with the tamer. Who? The adventurers shouted. They were excited because they were doing a quest with the tamer. Suda was quite famous in the circle of adventurers. He always brings Yuko with him when he entered the guild. So a lot of people knew him and his pet. Suda smiled wryly while scratching the back of his head. He then called Yuko to come. Yuko walked forward with small steps. He introduced her to the adventurers. This is Yuko, my partner. We're counting on you. Yeah, we're also counting on you this time. One by one the adventurers introduced themselves. There's a total of eight adventurers that was going to escort the dwarf. Three rank D and the rest were rank E including Suda. The dwarf peeked at the window and said, I'm counting on you guys until we reach Bulmar. Yeah, leave it to us. They started packing and went inside the carriage. Is everyone aboard? In that case. Let's go. The carriage was being pulled by a lion horse. It's a horse that has a lion's hair around its neck. It was stronger than a normal horse. So one lion horse was enough to pull a carriage. But the lion horse didn't know how to fight like a real lion. So the people only used it to pull carriages. So you went to Ladro City to enter the Ladro Institute. Yeah, that's the gist of it. Suta nodded at Jack. Then, why did you become an adventurer? Jack asked. The other adventurers just listened to their conversation. Sometimes budding and making everyone laughed. Well, I need money in the institute so I became an adventurer, Suda replied to Jack's question. Life is really hard, huh? Jack said as he looked outside through the window. Yeah, Suta nodded and he also looked outside. He reached out his hand and patted Yuko. Yuko was walking outside the carriage. She couldn't fit inside this place so she had to walk outside. Sorry about this Yuko, Suta said to her. M. Master. A small voice escaped from her mouth. She then turned her head and looked around. Grr. Suta knew that something was wrong when she was acting like this. There's an enemy. He shouted. Jack knocked on the front wall of the carriage. He told the dwarf to stop moving because there's an enemy. You sure about this? Jack asked while getting out of the carriage. Yeah, Yuko is the one who sensed them. Suta nodded and he also exited the carriage. The other adventurers followed suit. They pulled out their own weapons and looked around them. They were inside a small forest so trees were all over the place. A few silhouettes appeared in their vision. As I thought. Jack frowned when he saw this. Terror wolf, Suda said in a low voice when a pack of wolves walked out of the shadows. He grabbed the handle of his sword and pulled it out. Go. Yuko. Yuko dashed forward as soon as he shouted. The huge bear charged straight to the pack of wolves. Terror wolf was just a low dot level monster. In the game, their level was between 1. 10. Some players wouldn't even bother killing these wolves. They were no match against a level 21 red fur bear. Gra. Yuko roared as she waved her arms towards the wolves. Bang. Two wolves flew and crashed in the tree. A loud cracking sound could be heard from their bodies. She grabbed the wolf in front of her before smashing it on the ground. Bang. 
The impact caused the dust and smoke to shot up in the air. Swoosh. Two wolves jumped on her back and bit her flesh. Suda just watched her fight while holding a sword. He wanted her to gain more battle experience. She was a level 21 red fur bear. A pack of wolves was nothing to her. The other adventurers were fighting the other wolves. Looking around, Suda estimated that the number of wolves was more than 30. But this number wasn't a problem for a rank D adventurer. Jack was killing wolves left and right. He didn't even use his weapon. The blood of the wolves coated his fist. He then turned back his attention to Yuko. Just like before, she was still rampaging but there were some bite marks on her body. Hmm. His mana started to circulate around his body and the aura around him slowly changed. He focused his attention on the wolves that fighting Yuko. Shadow bind, the shadows of the wolves moved upwards and strangled their bodies. All of a sudden, the five wolves in front of Yuko stopped moving. The level of his shadow bind was five. The wolves had no way out of this even if they were an evolve wolves. A level 5 shadow bind could restrain a total of 20.5 targets. Every level, it increases by 5. Heis. With a side, Suda walked towards Yuko. He placed his palm on her body and cast it, light heal. That's enough Yuko. Suda raised his sword and walked towards the wolves. The wolves couldn't do anything as the shadow bind was restraining their movements. They watched Suda kill them one by one. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All of your soul will become a nutrition to make me stronger. Chapter 26. Triggering a quest two times in a row. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 26. Triggering a quest two times in a row Suda turned around after he killed the wolves. He noticed that Jack and the others were looking at him. What? As expected of a student of Ladro Institute. Jack praised him. The other adventurers nodded at his words. They saw how he bind those wolves using magic. They only thought that he was a swordsman but to think that he was also a mage. Nothing less from the one who passed the entrance examination of Ladro Institute. Back then when I was young, I also took the entrance exam of Ladro Institute, sadly I failed, Jack said. You took an exam. Suta looked at Jack. Yeah, it was ten years ago. Jack nodded at Suta. Well, enough talking let's go back now. They packed up and went back to the carriage to continue their journey. It was late at night when they arrived in Bulmar Villager. They settled themselves in the plaza of the city. Bulmar village was a prosperous and huge village. More than 5,000 people lived here in Bulmar village. But compared to Ladro city that have a population of 50,000 people, this village was small. This village was close to the kingdom, so it received some of its benefits. The Adventurers Guild had a branch in this village so Suda and the rest of the adventurers could record their quest here. Thank you, I'll give you your rewards and I hope that I can work with all of you again. Bye, the dwarf said to Suda and the other three adventurers. The remaining adventurers, such as Jack, would continue to escort the dwarf to the next village. They would stay here and sell some of the dwarf's products before they leave this village. Ding, congratulations on completing the escort quest. You've received 500 EXP. Suda heard the system prompt in his head telling him that he completed the quest. I hope I can see you in Guild War, Jack said to them. I hope too. Suta nodded and he patted Yuko. Both of them left and went to the nearest inn. The Guild War that Jack was talking about was the Tournament of the Adventurers Guild. Countless adventurers would go to the Navari Kingdom to participate in this tournament. Rank D to the highest rank were all going there to join the tournament. There's no solo battle in this tournament. All the fights were group battles. It was a chance for the other adventurers to raise their rank. Also, the rewards in the tournament were huge. It held every year in Navari Kingdom. Suda was laying down on Yuko's fluffy fur. He was trying to recall every quest in this village. 
the quest related to the Avadra Sword Saya. Actually, he could go down in the underground and get the Avadra Sword Saya, but that wouldn't do at all. He wanted to maximize his benefits and get some quest along the way. After a few minutes of thinking, he stood up. Yuko lifted up her head and looked at him with confusion in her eyes. It was like she's asking him, why did you get up? Let's go Yuko. We will go to the Adventurer's Guild. Suta said to her. Mew. Suta went to Adventurer's Guild and completed his quest. The receptionist recorded his quest in his card. A few more quests and I'll meet the requirements to promote to D rank, Suda said while looking at his adventurer's card. He then looked at the quest board and picked up the herb gathering quest. He walked back to the receptionist and placed the quest on top of the desk. The receptionist picked the quest and read it. She then looked back at him and said, the one who made this quest have a little request. He wants to meet the one who accepted this quest. Okay, Suta nodded his head. He knew this already and the quest was connected to the place where he found the Avadra Sword Saya in the game. Please wait here for a moment, sir. The receptionist said with a polite tone. Suta just stood there in the corner waiting for the man who made the quest. He crossed his arms in front of his chest and closed his eyes. The receptionist sighed in relief when she saw him waiting patiently. After a dozen minutes, the receptionist called him. Sir, this way please. Suda opened his eyes and saw the receptionist. She guided him in a closed room. There, he saw a man in his forties looking well. He has short white hair and a wrinkled face. Good evening, sir. I'm Mark the one who made the quest. The man stood up and introduced himself. I'm Suda, an adventurer. Suda replied and sat down in the chair opposite of the man. The receptionist bowed down and left the room. The room was devoid of any sound as no one said anything. Suda was the one who broke the silence. I need to find the evening grass, right? Suda said to Mark. Mark nodded in response. But evening grass is not something that can be found here, Suda said. Evening grass can be found in a place rich in dark energy like Curse Cemetery. But there is a place where evening grass grow in this village, Mark replied to him. There it is. Suda smirked inwardly. I'll tell you where it is if you really accept the quest, Mark said to him. He proposed a condition that Suda shouldn't tell anyone about this. I understand, I will not tell anyone about this, Suda said while closing his eyes. Good. Go to my shop tomorrow morning, I'll warn you don't wander in the night. They only attack the outsiders. Mark nodded before he stood up. He didn't forget to tell Suta the meeting place before he left. At the same time, Suta heard a familiar sound in his mind. Ding, quest triggered. Herb gathering. Mark asked you to bring him the evening grass. Rewards. 5000 EXP, 5 free attribute points Suta smiled and he opened his eyes. There's still one quest that he wanted to get before meeting Mark. Sir, don't wander in the night. The receptionist warned him before he left the guild. He went out of the guild and met with Yuko. She was always waiting for him when he goes inside the guild. It was the same in Ladro's city. Let's go. There is a place that we need to go first. Suta and Yuko went to the southern part of the village. It was a place where Slum lives. He told Yuko to hide and he concealed himself behind a box. He looked at the dark sky while waiting for someone to appear. The players called this event Encounters. An event where a player would accidentally encounter a special person. That person would give them a quest with high rewards. But what he was doing was not accidental encounter. He's waiting for that person to appear and make it look like an accidental meeting. Back then, he's the one who triggered this quest. This quest led him to the Evadra Sword Saya. After a few minutes of waiting, Suda heard a sound of crying. Here it is. Suda smirked before he stood up and patted his clothes. He waited for a few moments before he walked forward and turned in an alley. Pack. He bumped there into someone. The figure who bumped on him fell on the ground. Sorry. 
Suda apologized and saw a little boy. The boy has tears in his eyes. He has short black hair and big black round eyes. He was wearing ragged clothes full of dirt. Boy, why are you crying? Suda asked while helping the boy. Mister, thank you. The boy thanked Suda for helping him. It's okay, but why are you wondering this in this place? It's already dark and children should stay in their home. Suta asked the boy with a hint of concern in his voice. He noticed that the boy had bruises all over his body. He lifted up his hand and casted, light heel. The boy felt a warm energy entered his body. He looked and saw that the bruise on his body was gone. Thanks, mister. He looked at the man in front of him. He doesn't know what happened but he knew that this must have done something to heal his bruise. Suda smiled and he patted the head of the boy. He asked, can you tell me why you're wandering here at night? The boy hesitated first before he explained. At first, he and his sister were living here in this village peacefully. His sister was the one who took care of him after their parents died. She did all kinds of jobs to raise him. But one day, everything changed. His sister started to act differently. She was always in daze and muttering some words. Last month, he personally witnessed his sister killed a man using a strange sword. A demon with horns appeared behind her. After that day, his sister didn't show up. She didn't leave any trace so he doesn't have any idea where to find her. A demon possessed my sister and took her. I don't know where my sister is but I saw it with my own eyes. A demon possessed my sister. Do you believe me, mister? Yeah, I believe you. There's really a demon in this world. Suta nodded with a smile. The boy looked at Suta and recalled that he was a mage. The people didn't believe him when he told them that a demon took her sister. They just told him that his sister got tired of taking care of him. That's why she left. Um, dot. The boy looks like he wanted to tell him something. What is it? Suda asked. Can you help me find my sister? The boy asked him to help him find his sister. Sure, the sword that your sister was holding at that time. I came here to retrieve it. Suta said to the boy. Really, mister? A bright smile appeared on the face of the boy. Yeah, Suta nodded. Asterisk ding. Quest triggered. Rescue. Find and rescue the sister of the boy. Rewards. 10,000 EXP, 10 free attribute points, 2 skill point, 2 skill points, huh. Suda smiled and said, you don't have to call me mister, just brother will do. Okay, thank you, brother. The boy smiled at him. A pair of deep red eyes gleamed in the shadows. It looked at Suda with crazed eyes. Chapter 27 Abnormal People You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 27 Abnormal People Suda finally noticed that the rewards were higher than before. It only means that the difficulty was higher. Two skill points were one of the rewards of the quest to rescue the boy's big sister. It means that this quest was harder than conquering a load at level dungeon. Conquering a low dot level dungeon only gave him one skill point. It seems that getting back that sword is not that easy, huh? Suta said in a low voice. Tack. 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 A sound of footsteps echoed in the dark alley. No other sound can be heard except the sounds of footsteps. Suta turned his head and saw a figure of a man approaching him and the boy. The man has deep red eyes that gleamed in the dark. He frowned and observed the man. The man was walking in unsteady steps. It feels like he would fall any second and white liquid was flowing down from his mouth. What's this? This is not an undead. Blood vessels pop out in the forehead of the man. The man gritted his teeth before pouncing towards Suda. Yuko. Suda shouted and a huge bear appeared in the corner. Yuko stood up and pinned down the man on the ground. Arg. It hurts. It hurts. The man groaned in pain as a huge bear was pinning him down. 
Don't move, Suta said to the boy before he approached the man. He squatted down and observed him. He was sure that it was not undead. The man has berserk energy around his body. This energy drives him wild and insane. This led him to attack Suda. Suda suddenly recalled what Mark said before. I'll warn you don't wander in the night. They only attack the outsiders, was what he said. There's no scenario like this in the game. Also, the boy saw a demon behind his sister before she disappeared. Suta knocked the man unconscious using his fist. He looked at Yuko and said, You can let him go now, you did a good job today. Yuko then turned around and growled angrily. Suda also turned his head and saw a dozen figures in the shadows. This is bad, there is something wrong in this town. Suda raised his hand and the shadows beneath the figures burst out of the ground. It moved quickly and restrained everyone. Shadow bind, let's go Yuko. Suda turned around and he carried the little boy on his shoulder before he left. W. What's happening, brother? The boy was fluid U.S. Teared. I don't know. Suda shook his head and made a turn in the alley. There were people there waiting for him. Suda clenched his fist and restrained those people using shadow bind. Suda ran over those people while Yuko smashed them on the walls with her thick arms causing them to fell unconscious. If I'm alone I could just jump over the roofs but Yuko is here with me. Suda thought while glancing at his back. Yuko was following him. Every step that she made caused a loud sound attracting other people. Suda smiled wryly at this. He then ran at the direction of the carriage of the dwarf, the plaza. Just like what he expected, the carriage was also under attack by those abnormal people. The three adventurers who left with him were also here. Jack was knocking unconscious those people with the help of the other adventurers. Damn. What is wrong with these people? Jack cursed loudly as he delivered a blow to the stomach of a crazed man. Bang. The man was knocked back to the other people before falling unconscious. They keep coming. There's no way end. Then, they saw a huge bear behind the crowds. They were familiar with this bear. Suda circulated his mana around his body. With a boom, he rushed towards those abnormal people. Smash them, Yuko. Yuko roared and followed him. She smashed those people that tried to stop him. She kept waving her hands while following behind Suda. Help them. Jack shouted as he rushed towards the abnormal people to make a way for Suda and Yuko. Who? The other adventurers followed Jack. Bang. 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 Suda waved his arm and smashed the abnormal people in front of him. Those people flew away knocking the other abnormal people. He speed up and broke through the group of abnormal people. Hook glancing back at the abnormal people, Suda went directly to Jack. I have a plan, Suda said to Jack. Tell me, Jack replied. I will stop all of them, I will need you and the others to knock as many as you can before they break free from the restraint. Suta explained his plan to Jack. Can you really do that? Jack asked with a doubtful expression. There were more than a hundred abnormal people here and Suta told him that he could stop all these abnormal people. Why would I lie in this situation? Suta replied as he shrugged his shoulder. <laughs> Good, as long as you stop them. I can knock them out easily. Jack laughed loudly. He then looked at the boy on Suda's shoulder. By the way, did you kidnap that child? No, I just met him and the abnormal people attack us all of a sudden. Suda shook his head. His expression turned serious and said, I will start now. He placed the boy on the ground telling him to wait. He then focused his attention on the abnormal people. Jack Hiyuko and the rest of the adventurers were defending the carriage. The abnormal people kept coming in all directions. His magical energy flared up and reached the peak. With a wave of his hand, he casted Shadow Bind consecutively. He felt that he consumed more than half of his mana. Casting Shadow Bind consumed 10 mana. Using it consecutively drained half of his mana. Swoosh. Hundreds of shadows burst out of the ground. 
Seeing this, Jack and the rest stopped moving. They watched as the shadows bind every person in the whole area. Go. They regained their senses when they heard Suda's voice. <laughs> Let's finish this. Jack laughed and he charged at the group of abnormal people. Suda didn't sit idly as he rushed towards those people. He looked at Jack who was knocking unconscious those people left and right. He asked, I thought you would kill them. Why did you let them live? Someone came and warned us before, but we didn't heed his warning, Jack said while punching the abnormal people. He added, he came and request us not to kill them. We didn't kill them as we also didn't heed his warning before. We all treat his warning like a joke, but... Look now. Who's that man? Suda asked. The village chief came to us after you left, Jack said. I'll tell you more later after we finish this. Suta nodded at his words. He rushed towards the abnormal and chopped the back of their neck knocking them out. It took them half an hour before they knocked all those people out. It was tiring to hold back while fighting against many people at once. So Jack and the rest were gasping as beads of sweat formed in their forehead. Thank you for your effort, everyone. The dwarf came out of the carriage and thanked them for their effort. A green man was following the dwarf. This man gathered everyone's attention. Village chief. One of the adventurers called out. So that's village chief. Suda thought as he observed the man. The man has a green-colored skin. Some part of his body has green scales and a green long tail was moving on his back. The village chief noticed Suda and exclaimed, Oh. A brethren. Eh? Suda was surprised that the village chief called him his brethren. Well, it's not that surprising as both of them have green color skin. You're a halfling, huh? The village chief said after he observed Suda. He noticed that Suda doesn't have a tail and scales so he thought that he was only a half-dot-reptilian and half-dot-human. Uh... Yes. Suda smiled wryly. It's fine for them that they misunderstood his race. A high-end goblin was a rare species of a goblin and only a few people have seen it. They were almost extinct because of the constant killing that humans and demis did in the past. Those rare species can only be found in those forbidden areas. Thank you for helping these people. The village chief thanked him. I'm also an adventurer also, can you please tell why is this happening? Suta said. Even though he formed a speculation in his head, he still wanted to hear it from the village chief's mouth. Yeah, can you tell us what happened to them that made them like that? Jack asked while glancing at the unconscious people. The village chief looked at their face before he started to narrate them what happened. All of this started two months ago. Back then, the residents of this village started to disappear. Day by day received many reports about the disappearance of their husband, child, neighbor, etc. Every day one or two people would vanish. It happens every night. It was strange that no one found them. About a month ago, he received a report about people going crazy attacking other people. It was like a disease that slowly spread out in the village. But they didn't attack the people living here in this village, they only attacked the outsider. When he looked at those abnormal people it feels like those people wanted to attack them, but they were holding back. It feels like someone was telling them to attack people, but they resisted against the people here in this village. They let it all out when outsiders came here. Many people got infected by this strange disease. They attack and killed every outsider that came here. He sent a report to Hebrei Kingdom to help them fight this strange incident. But no one came, up until now the Hebrei Kingdom didn't even bother to investigate this incident. Those people went wild during night and they would forget everything that happened the next morning. It was really weird. Right now, half of the village folk have that kind of disease. Half. The population of this village is 5,000 and half of that is. Jack said with widely open eyes. If that's really the case then they would have to fight more than a thousand people and what happened this time was just the first wave. Come to me, to my house. They wouldn't go there. The village chief said. He led the group to his house. They should not expect the help of Hebrei Kingdom. 
a village like this wasn't even drawn in the map of the continent. For huge countries and kingdoms, this kind of village could disappear at any time. It was either by the monster tide or strange disease like this one. Suda looked back and saw that Yuko and the boy were following him quietly. He was sure of one thing. This incident happened because of the Kevadra sword Saya. The difficulty of the quest was many times harder than in the game. This world was going into the future that he doesn't know. There were no players to investigate and complete the incidents like this one. There were no adventurous players that would discover weird things left and right. He even wondered what's happening in the other village right now. It seemed that his sword, the Avadra sword Saya, was taking the route of hard to get. Chapter 28 Underground You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 28 Underground Suda, Jack, and the rest arrived in the village chief's house. The house was quite wide so it could hold all of them including Yuko. The group listened to the story of the village chief. The story about the mysterious possession or what they called disease spreading in this village. Based on what you said it started two months ago. And from my analysis, it will take another month before all of you become like those people, Jack said to the village chief. I also thought about that, but what can we do about it? There is no point as we could only wait for the people of Hebrei Kingdom to arrive. The village chief said with a sad expression. I don't think I've heard this kind of disease at all nor I've seen something like this. Jack shook his head. He wouldn't be able to help if he knew nothing about it. He was an adventurer expert in fighting, not a doctor. It's hard to dispatch a knight. The kingdom only uses them in war or other big situations. If this situation got worse to the point that it could harm the kingdom, only then they would dispatch a force to eliminate the threat. First of all, this village wasn't a part of Hebrei kingdom. That's the reason why they wouldn't send a force to help. The dwarf said. As a merchant, he knew a thing or two about the affairs of the kingdom. Boy, tell them what you know. Suta said as he patted the little boy's back. His words gathered everyone's attention. All of them turned their heads and looked at Suda. What do you mean? Did this boy know something? Suda shook his head and said, It's better if you hear it directly from him. Come on boy tell them what you told me before. The boy lifted up his head and looked at Suda. Suta nodded when he saw the look of the boy. The boy didn't hesitate anymore and he began to tell them what he told Suda before. There's something like that. A demon. A monster from legend. I've heard that there's no demon right now. The ancient civilization destroyed them all. Various exclamations sounded after they heard the boy's story. Even Suda, the owner of the Avadra sword Saya, doesn't know the origin of the sword. He only knew that it was a piece of dark grade equipment. Suddenly, the village chief bowed before them and said, Please help us solve this case. I'll give you anything that you want. The village chief begged them to find the boy's sister. After listening to the story of the boy, he was now sure that the sister of the boy and the demon the boy saw that day was the culprit in this incident. The culprit why all these people were going insane was because of the demon. We don't know the strength of the demon so it's better to check it first before we promise you, Jack said and the rest of the adventurers nodded. They wouldn't accept a quest that easily. They couldn't determine the difficulty of this quest so they couldn't accept it easily. There's a reason why the Adventurers Guild divided the quest into different ranks. The village chief looked at Suda with hopeful eyes. Suda was still the one who hasn't declined him. But Suda wasn't looking at him. He was looking at the prompt that received. Quest triggered. Elimination. Find and eliminate the cause of this incident. Rewards. 15,000 EXP, 5 free attribute points, 2 skill point, savior. Don't kill anyone and help them regain their senses. Rewards Looking at the quest, Suda felt that he really was quite lucky today. He didn't expect that he would receive more quests and the rewards for these quests were as high as the previous quest. But the difficulty was also high. He doubted that he could finish this quest with this current strength. He also had to hold back as once he killed one of those people he will fail the quest. Suda accepted these quests without hesitation. 
He then looked at the village chief and said. I'll do what I can to help. As expected of my brethren, a really good heart. The village chief felt like he was about to cry from Suda's reply. Oi oi. Suda, do you know what kind of danger lies in this quest? Jack said to him. I have a vague idea, Suda replied. No, you don't have any idea what a demon is. Jack said. If a demon is really here then they would be long dead, Suda said seriously. He received a lot of feats in the game and one of these was the Demon Annihilator. He received this feat from annihilating an army of demons. So his knowledge about demons far surpasses the people present in this place. Also, he knew that there's really no demon here. That was just the Avadra sword Saya. Don't worry I know what I'm doing. Suta said. Jack nodded when he saw how serious he was. Anyway, let's rest for now. Let's continue this later. Suta shook his head and said. Yeah, I will prepare your room for now. The village chief said. No need, I will sleep with Yuko, Suta said before he walked towards Yuko. He preferred to sleep in her fluffy fur. Just like what the village chief said before, the abnormal people didn't enter his house. The group fell asleep quickly as they were quite tired from what happened this night. Suda woke up before the sunrise. He felt a heavy feeling pressing on his chest. He looked down and saw that Yuko was hugging him tightly. He removed her hands and stood up. He looked outside and found that everything went back to normal. Only the traces of fight can be seen outside. The abnormal people were already gone. Oh. You're up. A voice sounded behind him. Suda turned around and saw Jack. He nodded at him before turning back to look outside. Are you really planning to help them? You don't know what danger lies here. Jack said as he walked beside Suda. I just want to eliminate the cause of this incident, Suda said. Then, he turned around and walked toward the bathroom. Jack looked at Suda's back without saying anything. Suda washed his face and thanked the village chief for letting them in. He ate the breakfast that the village chief made before he left the house with Yuko. He went to the shop of Mark. Mark was a herbalist and he made some medicine using his knowledge. That's why he needed the evening grass. He found that the shop was still closed. Nevertheless, he knocked on the door before he entered the shop. Oh. You're here. It seems that you've heeded my warning yesterday. A man with white hair greeted him. N.N. Suda sat down in a chair and said, let's talk about the quest. I want to complete it quickly. How about some tea? Mark said to him. No, I want to go there right now, Suda shook his head as he declined the tea that Mark offer. Okay, wait here for a few minutes, Mark said before he went inside the room. Good. Suda closed his eyes while waiting for Mark. After a few moments, Mark came out with a small bag. He looked at Suda and said, let's go. Suta nodded and walked behind Mark. Mark led him to an abandoned church in the village. Suta looked around the church. Moss already covered the entire walls and ceiling of the church. It seems that no one was maintaining this church for almost 10 years. At the back of the church, Mark opened a secret compartment that will lead someone under the ground. There are other paths, but this is the safest among all the paths, Mark explained to Suda. He then gave the small bag to Suda. Just put the evening grass inside the bottle there in the bag, Mark said while Suda opened the bag and saw a transparent bottle. I just need to put the grass here, Suda muttered as he closed the bag and hung it on his waist. Be careful there, although it's the safest this place there are still dangers lurking in the dark, Mark warned him. Of course, there's a danger downstairs, if not Mark would go down personally and he wouldn't place a quest in the Adventurer's Guild. Yeah, I know. Suta nodded at Mark. Just looking at the rewards, he could vaguely guess the difficulty of a quest. I'll go now, Suta said and he turned to Yuko. He asked her to stay here with Mark. She was too big to fit inside the narrow path. She wouldn't be able to move comfortably and she would only become a burden if she followed him downstairs. The underground was an abandoned place and it became a dungeon. 
a place where Vudra Sword Saya stayed. He doesn't know the lore of this village, but he could guess that this was a prosperous city before it became the Bulmar village. He raised his hand and tapped the walls made of bricks. The bricks were still sturdy despite its looks. The floor was wet and sticky. Gra. A pair of deep red eyes appeared in the darkness. Just like what I expected, some of them are here. Suta said with a laugh. It seemed that there was a type of abnormal people that live here underground. They didn't return back to normal even though it's morning. Come, it's getting exciting this way, the power of the Vidra sword exceeds my expectations. Back in the game, the only person that Avidra sword Saya possessed was the sister of the little boy before. The existence of abnormal people wasn't present in the game. Chapter 29 A Strong One You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 29 A Strong One Suda dashed forward and the figure also charged at him. Swoosh. Suda ducked down to avoid the hands of the figure before he delivered a blow to the stomach of the figure. Bang. The figure flew away and Suda chased after it. He chopped the neck of the figure knocking it down. It's harder to hold back against this kind of people, Suda said in a low voice while looking at the unconscious man. He won't kill anyone in this place. It's not that he's against killing someone. It's just that he still retained a part of his humanity and want to avoid killing as much as possible. If it comes to the situation that he needed to kill someone then he won't hesitate and he will do what he needed to do. Also, the quest this time was asking him to save them from the possession of the Avidra sword Saya, not to kill them. Help them regain their senses and clarity. Release them from the grasp of the Vidra sword. I wonder if the Vidra sword can possess me, Suda muttered before turning to look at the dark path. There was some grass on the floor, but this was not the evening grass. Evening grass looks like an ordinary grass, but it has a different color. There were blue dots across the leaves of the grass. The unusual energy here was getting thicker the more he got deeper in the underground. Then, I will turn here and... Suda stopped as he saw five figures with gleaming red eyes. Here they come. He clenched his fist and charged straight to the five figures. Bang. 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 Who really, they attack anyone who enters this place, Suda said as he wiped the sweat forming on his forehead. There were locked rooms everywhere. This place was really an underground base built for sheltering people, but who knows how long people abandoned this place. He walked to the end of the corridor, and he found that one of the rooms was not locked. The door had been left half dot open, and the lock was broken. He noticed some scratch marks on the door. He reached out his palm and traced the scratch marks. There's no dust. Suta muttered. Just from seeing the marks, he could guess that someone made this recently. Maybe a few days ago. He slightly pushed the door open, only to find rows of tables placed in the corner of the room. Transparent bottles with an unknown liquid were neatly arranged on top of the tables along with strange devices. Opposite of it was a cabinet full of books which were covered in dust. Picking up one of the transparent bottles, he shook it a few times. The orange liquid inside the bottle emitted a dim light. The light wasn't that bright but in this dark room, it was extremely noticeable. A monster potion, huh? A monster potion was a potion that will let someone borrow the power of a monster. But it comes with a side effect due to harnessing the beast's energy. Beast energy or also called best verum by ancient people. Powerful and destructive energy that monster uses. A monster that could harness beast energy was a dangerous individual and countries would use forces to eliminate those monsters when it appeared in their territory. Only level 40 monsters have this kind of power. Once he reached level 40 he would be able to use beast energy or best verum. But that's far in the future. The side effect of this potion is something I don't want to experience. Suda shook his head and then he placed the bottles inside his bag. He could sell these potions or use this in an emergency. He then walked towards the books. The books were covered in thick dust. He reached out his hand to pick one book. He used his other hand to wipe the dust off the cover of the book. He saw the characters that he couldn't understand. 
It's not a Nerman language, huh? He said in a low voice and opened the book. He saw a humanoid creature. A man with a horn sticking out on the side of his head. He has red hair and a pair of deep red eyes. The scara was black and the pupils were red. Black stigmata were on the forehead of the man. If he wasn't wrong this was one of the ancient races, the Vitra race. But even when he spent more than 10 years playing the battle world online, he still hasn't met one Vitra race. Suda frowned and he closed the book. He placed it inside the small bag that Mark gave him. He will have a time to study it later after he finished the quests here. He exited the room and a thick stench hit Suda. What's this smell? Suta said as he pinched his nose. He walked forward and saw two pathways. One on his left side and one on his right side. And behind him was a path going straight to the surface. Suda looked at his left side and said, if I'm not wrong there's an evening grass in this direction. He walked forward while looking around. When he looked at the walls, his gaze was attracted by something. The walls were filled with scratch marks. It looks scary like some beast was rampaging here recently. Soon, he reached the end of the path. There's another path on the right side, and there's a half to open door on the left side. The wooden door was slightly twisted and it was also full of scratch marks. He approached the door and pushed it open without hesitation. Inside it was a wide room filled with grass. At the center of the room, he could see a grass with blue dots. At the back, he could see a figure with crimson eyes. The man was exuding a very dangerous aura. This man was clearly different from those abnormal people. Ho, oh, of course, I wouldn't get the evening grass that easily. It wouldn't give me such a reward if those weaklings are the one guarding it. Suta said with a smirk. He stepped forward and revealed himself to the man. Suda attracted the attention of the man as soon as he walked forward. Suda clenched his fist as his magical energy started rising at a fast rate. The man gritted his teeth and veins pop up on his arms. Suda didn't stop as he continued to walk forward with a smirk on his face. Boom. A gust of wind swept out the whole room as both of them collided against each other in an instant. Suda smiled and he once again dashed towards the man. He coated both of his fists with mana. Bang. 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 He launched a barrage of powerful punches containing great force behind it. But it only causes the man to stagger backward. The nails of the man grew longer and sharper. He swung it towards Suda. Swoosh. Suda slightly bent his body backward and the sharp nails passed in front of his face. He twisted his body and took a distance away from the man. But when he looked up, he already saw the man was rushing straight at him. Shadow bind, the shadow beneath the man moved. It emerges from the floor and strangled the man. Suda opened both of his palms and casted a fireball and ice shot simultaneously. Boom. He then placed his palm on the floor before looking at the man covered in smoke. He knew that he would not be able to defeat that man with just that. Fireball and ice shot were just a level one spell. Gra. The man roared loudly and it swept the smoke and dust around him. His aura was continuously rising. It also snapped the shadow that was binding him. You're finally getting serious, huh? Then allow me to show you a bit of my power. Suda said with a smile. He then used Agility Boost and Strength Boost to buff him up. Agility Boost was a spell that could raise the target agility by 10. It has a time limit of 10 minutes. During this time his agility attribute would increase by 10 points. It was still a level 1 spell so the increase in attribute was quite low. If he levels it up the added attribute and time limit would increase. Strength Boost spell was the same as a Agility Boost spell. The only difference was that it increased the target strength instead of agility. He cannot stack up these spells. Even if he used it on himself once again the added stat wouldn't increase. These two spells consumed 10 points of his mana. Good, this is enough. Suda looked at the man, and the man also looked at Suda. After a few seconds, the man rushed straight at Suda. But before he reaches Suda he stopped. 
he looked down and saw his foot was sinking in mud. He was confused. He knew that there's no mud in this grassy room. Mud slide, I've already prepared it before, Suda said before dashing towards the man. In just a second, he arrived in front of the man and pulled back his fist. Suda poured his mana on his fist and threw it on the stomach of the man. Bang. Pulling back his other fist, he threw another powerful punch. Bang. Arg. The man groaned and he raised both of his hands. I won't let you. Shadow bind, once again the shadow emerges and strangled the man. It restrained his movements. Good, let me finish this, Suda smirked as he clenched both of his fists. 